بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Okay, this is practical self-care part eight. Here in this um, short lecture, what I want to do is talk about how we can find the ta'weed. And basically what the ta'weed is, is what they've, the sahid has done sihr on, you see. Um, because if we, find, if we find this thing, then insha'Allah ta'ala, the patient will be cured from sihr and we destroy it correctly. Once we've destroyed it correctly, then the person will be cured from sihr, inshallah ta'ala. The reason I'm doing this talk is I've recently had an experience using a technique where I used Rukia diagnosis to try to work out where this thing was. And basically what I used, I used the same principles that I used to find the jinn in my body. Now if you remember from Practical Self Rukia Part 4, I talked about how... I was able to find the gene in my body. And I did that by using Rukia diagnosis, basically. Where I would read Rukia to see if I was possessed, and I was possessed. Was the gene in a particular area? Was it stuck in a particular area? Was it, was it stationary and it's just basically static? I reacted to that Rukia. Okay. When I read Rukia for is the gene in my head, there was no reaction. But when I checked to see if I was possessed, I would react. So the gene wasn't in my head. Because there was no reaction for that. It wasn't in my legs because there was no reaction for that. When I checked if it was in my chest area, it was. I got a reaction. Then I found exactly where it was. I put a cup there and I removed it. For more information on that, please watch Practical Self Rukia Part 4. Well, taking those principles um, and what I did there, we can actually do the same thing when we're trying to find a ta'weef. You see. So the first thing you need to do here is you have to diagnose the person with sihr, obviously. I mean, if the person doesn't have sihr, there's no point in looking for a ta'weef, right? Yeah, that makes sense, right? So what I did with this patient is that we first did rookie diagnosis to find out if he's got uh, sihr. So we read, you know, um, you know, we read rookie for that, you know, asking, and we can mean asking Alice to show show us if um, he, if he's got sihr basically that's what we did um, now if anybody has a problem with that there's no wrong there's nothing really wrong with me asking Allah to show us if he has if he has sihr because in in the sharia the intention for ruqya and the dua itself is not fixed uh, what we've got to remember is that ruqya mustn't contain shirk and it mustn't contain obviously bid'ah and it mustn't also can, um, it must be beneficial to the patient. It must be beneficial to the patient. And obviously, this is. There's no shirk in here, and the patient is benefiting from this rukia because once the person knows he's got sihr, that will change his life. He will know that he know that he has a disease and which he has to treat. Then, because then obviously we'll have to we'll go, we'll follow procedures, we'll follow treatments to obviously try to cure cure him by the permission of Allah of sihr. So. If, but if somebody still has a problem with that, asking Allah to show if the person has said, okay, let's let's not use those words, maybe, let's not use that attention. Let's ask the Allah to cure him from sihr. Ask Allah to cure him from sihr. I think that would be a bit clear for some people. Ask him, we ask someone, Allah, when somebody comes in front of us, we complain about certain problems. Um, obviously, we can't tell if they've got sihr or not. So we'll just read. Okay, let's just ask Allah to cure him from sihr. Let's see how you react to that. We ask Allah to cure him and he gets reactions. Now you can see now the treatment itself has become a diagnosis for us. So he reacts. What does it mean? Obviously he has, he has sihr because I'm asking Allah to cure the sihr. He reacts to that. Obviously he has sihr. You see. So the next thing I did with this patient is I diagnosed, okay, he's got sihr clearly. I can see with those reactions. And it's strange, you know, what I want to say it's strange. It, it is as if Allah wants us to do a diagnosis or know that the person's got sihr. Because I have never seen a case where when we read Rukia treatment on someone, the initial Rukia treatment, that they get cured straight away from it, to be honest. I've never seen a case like that. I've never even heard of a case like that. Where somebody reads that initial Rukia treatment on someone for Sihir or for Ain or whatever, and they read and the person gets cured straight away. No, it doesn't happen like that. It's as if Allah wants us to see, look, the person's got Sihir. This is your sign from Allah that this person's got Sihir. 
Why, does, why do you think Allah creates these reactions in people? When we, when we read Ruqya, Allah is not frivolous, He doesn't do something for no reason. There must be a reason why this person is reacting. This is our sign that this person has sihr. Now we know, from the phys we know that the physical diseases, they don't give you any signs. So when we read Ruqya on someone who has diabetes, for instance, there are no reactions. Yes, the Ruqya is doing something, but there is no physical reaction. The, the person doesn't feel anything. You see, the person doesn't feel anything. So, let's just go back to our, our patient. Okay, so we've diagnosed him with sihr. So he has sihr. Okay? Then the other thing we did, next thing we did, okay, let's see if he's connected to a sihr network or a ta'weeda, uh, you know, is he connected to that? Because that's what the sihr network is, basically. Uh, as I've said in my other lectures and on my website and my articles, there is a network between the patient and the ta'weed. There's a connection. So we read for that. This, is this person connected to a sihr network or a ta'weed? Is he connected to that? You know, a sihr network with, at the end of it with a ta'weed. Is he connected to that? And he is. So he's connected to, so he reacted to that as well. So he's, so he's connected to a sihr network. Okay. He's connected to a sihr network. Okay. So he's connected to a sihr network and obviously he's connected to a ta'weed. Um, so then I did, okay, is he connected to... Is he connected to, or we can say, oh Allah cure him from, oh Allah cure him from um, one ta'with. I didn't get any reactions for that one. But is he connected to, a, is he connected to sihr networks? Could be, how we don't know how many, is he connected? He's connected, but he's not connected to one ta'with. You see, I didn't get reactions for that. We've got clearly reactions for, uh, connected to, a, to any ta'with, he is connected to any ta'with. He is. But is he connected to one? It's not one. So then I just thought, well, usually these cases, you know, uh, they're not many. Person that, I mean, I have one particular case where somebody did have about eight ta'wee they were connected to, uh, you know, sadly. Um, but here I just looked at the situation, you know, background information. I just thought, well, maybe this, let's just go for two first of all. Let's see if he's connected to two. We read with that in Chacha Allah, cure him from, cure him from two, cure him from uh, basically the sit network which is connected to two ta'wee. Cure him from that basically. And we've got reactions for that. So he's connected to two. So we knew he was connected to two ta'weeth. So we're asking Allah to cure him. So the treatment itself has become like a diagnosis for us. So nobody can really claim that we're doing something strange or doing bidah. We're just doing rukya treatment. That's what we're doing. And the person's reacted to two ta'weeth. Just like he, react, he reacted to sihr. He's got sihr. He reacted to that. You know. And probably if we did check him for um, sihr of divorce, maybe he reacted to that as well. You see. You know, so... There's nothing strange going on here, we're just doing rookie treatment. But the rookie treatment itself has become like a diagnosis for us, you see. So when we did this, I will cure him from two ta'weed, I will cure him from two ta'weed, I will cure him from two ta'weed, we got reactions. So we know that he's connected to two, obviously. You know, he's connected to two. Then what we did, I was wondering, hmm, are these two things together? So then I... Read with that intention, are these two ta'weeth two together? Basically, we're in a very short space, you know, not very far from each other. Are they close to each other? I mean, you, I mean, I think I used in my mind when I was reading that, or in my heart, the intention was, is it a metre or less? Are these two ta'weeth a uh, metre or less? Or are they come from a, a two ta'weeth which are close together, but uh, not more than a metre or less? Read with this sort of intention. And we got reactions for that, so we said, ah. Then I knew that these things are close together. A metre or less together, somewhere Okay, then we read, are they in the same country? We've got a reaction for that. These two ta'weeth are, you know, look, from two ta'weeth which are in the same country. We started getting reactions for that. Okay, then we did, okay, are they, oh, look, you from two ta'weeth which are, which are in the same city. So we've got to get reactions for that. Okay, and they're in the same city. Okay, and you can choose cities. I mean, there's no harm in doing that as well. Uh, but obviously, we, we, used the, we used the patient city from the city which he was in. So he was in from that city he was in. Okay, then we, um, then we said, okay, you know, usually these things are in the house, somebody's house. I mean, we could go by street by street if we wanted to, but what we did, we just, let's just go straight to his, um, if it's, it's in his city, let's go to his house. I want to kill him from two ta'weed which are in his house. I want to kill him from two ta'weed which are in his house. I want to kill him from two ta'weed which are in his house. We started getting reactions for that. Okay, when I'm reading this book, I was just using sort of fat time, and to be honest, when I was reading it, I wouldn't read more than maybe three times and then you would get reactions. You would get reactions, you would get strong reactions as well. Um, so the two ta'weeth are in the same house. That's what we got. 
in his own house, in this patient's own house. And I was, then I was thinking, hmm, this is interesting, in the house. And that, that makes it much easier for us. I mean, before, we didn't have any idea where it was. At least, we, I mean, we can, now we can turn the house upside down if we want to and try to find it. But I thought, no, that's going to be a little bit more, that'll be a bit difficult. Let's, we can make things a little bit easier for ourselves. Or while I kill him from any t- two tapweed which are in his own room. And we started getting reactions for that. Because obviously he's affected by those tapweed. They're connected to him via how? Via the Sihr network. Okay, he's connected to those two things, you see. So he's affected by them. So then we, um, uh, from his room, so that makes things a little bit easier. Then from there, we asked and, you know, found that little, one or two bits of information from about the person. And then we went for his particular, you know, drawer or particular chest of drawers. Or he had some, he had a set, he had a basically a cupboard. So we asked Allah that. So he's like, Allah killed from two tapweed which are in his cupboard, which are in his cupboard, basically. And he started getting reactions for that. I said, okay, it's in there, that, that, that is really easy. So we stopped the rookie and asked him, okay, what have you got in, your, in that cupboard? Can you tell me two things which you've got in there, which are close together? And he's, he was saying, well, I only have clothes in there, that, nothing really big. Obviously, we're thinking of something really big, something maybe large, you know, quite large, you know, distinct large, you know, items. He said, I don't have anything really important in there. I mean, it's just a few bits of clothes and some socks. I mean, he couldn't... He, he, Nothing really important in it. But then finally he said, well, well I have my, my um, a little box where I've got two USB, two SU, two, two USB um, sticks or memory sticks. And I said, well, okay. And then I just read with that intention using those two things just to make sure is it those two things. So we read with that intention. Well, I came from, came from any sihir which is coming from these two USB sticks. Came from any sihir which is coming from these two USB sticks basically. And he started reacting to that. So now, alhamdulillah, we knew what, what, what the problem was. It's these two USB sticks. So what I said to them then is, uh, okay, you sit down here next to me. And, we're, and then I, we contacted the family using FaceTime. And they're, I mean, they're obviously, they're thousands of miles away. Yeah. Um, and then I told the family basically what to do, get a bowl of water, read Rukhi into it, sort of, like and ask with the intention to destroy, destroy Sihir on these two USB sticks. Okay, and they, so the red sort of fell like a nice into the water, okay, maybe seven times as a pair, blew into it, then they took the two USB pieces and they dropped them into the water. The patient sitting next to me, and when they dropped them in, nothing uh, happened for about a minute or so. About two minutes into that dropping, or since they dropped the two USBs into the water, he started reacting, he said, I'm feeling something. And then I basically started to shake him like this, like as if somebody's doing rockery on him. So he shakes, I'm feeling something outside, I'm feeling something. Okay, there we go. It's definitely these two USB sticks. So there you go. You know, we didn't do any shirk. We didn't do any birra. And alhamdulillah, Allah guided us to wear these two things. We didn't talk to any jinn. You know, if anybody says to us, what have you been doing? What are you doing? You're doing something strange? Well, we just did rockery treatment and we took some information from there. Are we allowed to do that? Have we done anything wrong? Well, nothing wrong there. You know, has this helped the patient? Obviously, this has helped the patient. Which same person is going to say you can't do what we just did? Yes, sometimes you'll be able to find out if you know where the ta'weed is via um, a dream. Which, which happened to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi That's a possibility, yes. But sometimes you can't. So what are you going to do in that situation? Somebody has really bad sihr. There's one way you can do it like this. You can do it like this, inshallah ta'ala. You can do it like this. So then what we did there... Um, we got them to break, break up the ta'weed and he's reacting. SubhanAllah, it's amazing to see this. They have made me free thousands of miles away and these, the, the, his relatives are breaking up the, the, ta'weed, the two USB sticks, reading Rukh and Surah Falak and on them, and he's reacting. You know? And it was a pretty bad reaction, but alhamdulillah he was, he was able to control it. Um, and then they broke it all up, they broke them up, put them into rocky water for a little while again, and then they, um, uh, and then they they burnt them, and they used some maybe um, some flat, um, lighter fluid to try to burn it. They burnt they burnt them for a while, and then and then he stopped getting reactions. Actually, he stopped getting reactions when they they put it into the water, you know. So, and you know, and the question gets asked, doesn't it? Is it just enough to put it in water? 
Well, it's not, because what we, when, when they put it in water, the patient did actually stop reacting. So oh, they broke it all up, broke all the tapweed up, the two USBs, and put them in water. He reacted for a little while, and then he stopped. So oh, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling very good. He was saying, he was feeling very good. Then, then what I said, it's not over yet. I don't think it's over yet. We need to put this in, we need to burn them, because the hadith actually um, does, um, does uh, sort of imply that these things should be burnt. And then the hadith is, let me get my quote. The hadith is actually in. The hadith is actually in Kitab al Salam in Sahih Muslim 5428. When, when Aisha asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I mean, did you burn it? Meaning the did you burn it? And, uh, and he, he said, no, he didn't burn it. From there, we can tell that uh, he would have corrected her if, it, if burning wasn't one of the things you're supposed to do with it, you see. He didn't say, oh, Aisha, we don't burn these things, they're not supposed to be burnt. So burning really is part of it. You really do have to burn these things. And this, this experience, uh, you know, which we had, alhamdulillah, proves that these things have to be burned. Because the patient seemed like he was cured. Okay, it seemed like he's, he's cured. Then what I told them to do was, look, you, you better um, burn, the, um, uh, burn it now. So they dried it and they started to burn it. Uh, like I said, they used lighter fluid and they started to react again. So I said, there you go, clearly he's still connected to this thing and he's still reacting to these USB sticks. So I told him, keep burning, keep burning, keep destroying it, you see. And then they finished. So we've done, uh, we can't do any more than that. We've burnt it as much as we can. Um, uh, that's what we can do. And then, so what I did then, I said, like, I, I read on him again to see if he's still connected to those two USB sticks. He was still connected. So I said, look, I don't know what you've done. I don't know if you've done a process properly because he's still connected. We, we need to do this again. So, I looked at what they were doing and the way they used the lighter fluid and since this thing had some metal parts to it as well, I suggested to them, look, we need to get some sort of blowtorch or sort of what we call this uh, handheld flame thrower, I'm um, sorry, <laughs> flame, uh, you know, thrower. So, it's a, it's a flame thrower which you would, you know, um, okay, you know, blowtorch, so you would burn so they can burn the individual items, you know. Burn, make sure that each piece is burnt properly. So I suggest that they go to the DIY store and get one of those things. Um, alhamdulillah, they did that. And then I said to him, okay, I want you to break it up again. Let's start again from the beginning. Uh, except we're not going to do the water part again. So I got them to break it up again. So reading Surah Falak and I said, I said, take your time. Break each individual up again. And I told him to get some sort of pliers or some sort of device or anything. Which And here, what you've got to do, you've got to just improvise sometimes. So I wanted them to buy some sort of tool which is going to help them crush all of those bits and pieces up. So they found something, um, some sort of pliers or whatever it was, wire cutters, and they used that to break up each individual piece into small pieces. And as they're doing that, they read the sort of Farrakhanas and, and gently blowing over the items, the, t the two USB sticks. Okay, And he's reacting still again, he's starting to react again as they do it again. They start again, you see, he's reacting, the patient's reacting. Um, after they did that, after they did that, then they took all the pieces and they put it into a frying pan. It was an iron, it was a, I think they said to me it was an iron one as well. Iron, an iron frying pan. And then they put the pieces into that and then they used the, um, the blow torch and they burnt it. Burnt it, going through each of them and he started to react. Then they came to a point where he stopped reacting. They're burning, 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 burning. And they stopped. So he stopped reacting. And I said, okay, fine, wait now. Okay, after doing that, and they, they spent quite a lot of time doing that, alhamdulillah. So I said, okay, wait. I said, is it done yet, Said I said, ah, oh, we don't know yet. How are we going to know? How are we going to know, Said if it's done or not? Well, well, what you've got to do, obviously, do the diagnosis again. Okay, or if some people don't like that term, <laughs> do the treatment again. Okay, so we turned to the patient and read on him. Oh, well, they're from the two, two USB sticks. Oh, well, they're from the two, the set of coming from the two USB sticks, you know. And he starts reacting. You know, this, so, he's, I mean, so he's getting something from there still. Uh, he was getting something from there, you know. Afwan, sorry, the second time he did it, sorry, as that was the first time, sorry, Afwan. The second time I did that, I checked him, he was getting no reactions. So the second time when they used the blowtorch, when they used the blowtorch, there was no reactions. So alhamdulillah, through the diagnosis, we were able to locate the these items and... We were, able, we were able to destroy it properly. Because some people don't destroy these things properly. So even if they find them anyway, they don't find them sometimes from a dream or whatever, they don't destroy it properly. You see, what you've got to do, it shows you the importance of understanding the Sihr network. And I've been criticized for this. I remember one patient saying to me, what is this thing? 
you know, he spoke to another Iraqi, and the Iraqi said to him, well, you know, what is this? Forget that, forget that. It's all rubbish kind of thing, you know. We don't need to know that. Well, you need to know this for this, because it's that Rukia which helped me know if he's connected or not. So that's knowing that Sihr network, knowing that and reading on that, Abe was a, I was able to know if he was connected to these USB sticks or not. So once that connection had gone, so that is the, in it, once that went, then I know, ah, he's not connected anymore. So I said, okay, it's no, alhamdulillah, he's disconnected from that. No problem. You know, he's got no, um, he's not connected to the USB sticks no more. But what I said to the family, because they had some, that they brought, I think, two uh, blow torches or what you, uh, flame, uh, flame uh, thrower. So I, I handheld one. I said to them, just finish it off, just, you know, just to make sure, you know, I can see it's not connected, but just to make sure, break up the things again, and then finish off your last um, um, blowtorch on, on those items. And they did that, alhamdulillah, and, you know, there was no more reactions from the, uh, while they were doing that, for the third time, no more reactions from the patient, alhamdulillah. Um, Now, the patient obviously had sihr before, and from what I remember, we found that he had separate sihr as well. So he had some sort of eating sihr as well. That jinn sihr through um, jinn, because when we did the ruqya, he's reacting those clear limb movements. And when you got clear limb movements, we know that there's a jinn through sihr has come come there. I'm reading for sihr, asking Allah to cure him from sihr, and he start to clear limb movements. That shows that there's a jinn through sihr there. Now I could obviously do ruqya where I just read for any jinn through sihr and I can get reaction but we know that if you do ruqya through just checking from experience you read um, for sihr only and you start getting clear limb rules you know there's a jinn or some jinn or one jinn or one jinni through sihr you see so he had that he had jinn through sihr he had separate sihr which he had eaten or something drank I didn't check exactly but I know that there was some sort of eaten or drunk drunken sihr there as well um, so he had, he had those two bits of and obviously he was connected to the Sihir network at the beginning as well, uh, you know. Once we finished all of that, what I decided to do was just, to, I was going to leave him for a few, uh, a, a day or two, actually two days I think it was. I left him alone, I didn't do any diagnosis on him. I said, okay, whatever's in him, now he's got that disconnection, inshallah ta'ala we pray, made a lot of dua, we hope that whatever's in him will leave, leave his body, you know. That's what we, we, we prayed for, you see. Oh, and I just remembered, when he was actually getting reactions, and this is something which somebody could do, when he was getting reactions, um, while they were breaking up the ta'weed and that, I was actually reading khuruj rukri on him. I was asking Allah to take it all out. Ah, oh, Rabbi, take it all out. I was reading, use a sort of fatah, asking Allah, please draw all the sihr out of him and take all the jinn out of this, uh, this patient. You know, take all the sihr out, take all the sihr out of him and take all the... Um, the jinn out of this patient. That's what I was reading when he was reacting. So I was wanted to actually help the process. I was doing that. But once he stopped reacting, I left him. I didn't do anything. And um, I left him for about maybe two days, I think it was. It was two days. And I came back to him. And then I said, okay, let's just check you for what you've got now. Let's see, inshallah. Let's see if you've got anything left over. So we read for Sihir this time. Nothing. No reactions. I said, alhamdulillah. Absolutely no reactions. Checked him for the, I mean, that, that when I was doing that intention, it was, it was, it included everything. So it included jinn from sihr, separate sihr, and uh, the links, any, 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 any sihr network that he's connected to. Nothing, we didn't get no reactions whatsoever. I said, alhamdulillah, wakbar, this is excellent, fantastic. Now then I realized the significance and the importance of finding that ta'weed and destroying it properly with diagnosis. Because I could, we could have just destroyed it you know, not doing it properly and not using diagnosis to check if it's still connected and just throwing it away and just realize, oh, the sihr is still there. I'm quite sure there are a lot of people who do that. They actually find the thing which is the real, the sihr, the ta'weed, but they don't destroy it properly, they don't burn it and they don't check if the person is still connected to it or not. That, you know, sadly, you know. So, so there was no sihr basically, it's clear of all sihr. So I was surprised, alhamdulillah, what about this is wonderful, you know. So then I wanted to check, okay, is there any other jinn there? Because I know there was jinn from Hasid he had as well, and Ain. They were there as well. I read for that, see if there's any um, jinn, any other jinn in his body. They all seem to have gone. So subhanAllah, you know, so I was really surprised and very happy with that. Alhamdulillah. So I thought maybe this is really important to share this with people. Yes, some people might say this is strange, we've never heard of these things, but this is fine. Because it, we are not going against any of the rules of um, ruqya that the Sharia, you know, that, that, that have been stated in the Sharia. 
We have to understand that. You see, and people are going to benefit from this if they do this properly. Now, it, it might be that you might not find a thing. You, you might not be able to do the ruqya properly. It might not work out for you, um, this process. Uh, but it worked out for me and this patient, alhamdulillah. We have to point out, though, which this is really important, it's not going to work for people who are sinning. I mean, this is specific ruqya now. Uh, you know, so, you know, it's, you know, it's not going to work if somebody's got a lot of sins, especially if the jinn is speaking. This particular patient actually had, when I first saw him, the jinn was speaking. And then I said, I can't do nothing for this person. I can't even do general diagnosis on this person because the jinn is just... And even, even with my voice, it will start speaking. So, you know, so forget it. So I just told the patient, look, work on your iman, sort your iman out basically, and I'll come back to you. And I came back to him and alhamdulillah, he sorted his iman out. And this, we were able to do this process. So it's, I think it's essential that... Once we diagnose someone with sihir, we try to do this process. Let's try to sort this out because this, this, I've never seen anything, anybody get cured from sihir as quick as this. Yes, we've had cases of um, people using a jet hijama, but it takes a few you know, times of them doing it. Sometimes it can happen once, yes, but this has got to be the quickest way I've seen of somebody being cured from sihir. This has to be the quickest, you know. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I mean, it is from the sunnah, isn't it? Basically, to tell us to find this thing and to destroy it. You know, so we really have to, um, once we've diagnosed somebody with sihr, we have to try to find this thing. So this issue of sins, going back to this issue of sins, it's really important. Don't even try to do this process if the person's got sins. It's not worth it. Because it's not going to work. You're going to get different results. You're not going to uh, know what you're doing, basically. So don't do it if the person's got sins. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha ila anta. Nastaghfiru ka'ala wa tubu ilaik.